Here are some of the most ridiculous things athletes have bought. Number 11, Scottie Pippen. While Scottie Pippen's on the court accomplishments cannot be questioned, he did make some questionable money choices off the court. Exhibit A would be a jet he bought for $4 million. Now, buying an actual jet isn't actually that crazy because you can recoup most of the cost of the jet if you bought the right one. Plus, it can be a business expense. However, the expensive part of owning the jet is the upkeep. And unfortunately for Pippin, he had actually bought a broken jet. How? Because Pippin apparently did not inspect jet before buying it. The jet's engine needed a million dollars to repair. He ended up suing his lawyer and Scotty never fixed the plane. Hey, do us a quick favor and hit that like button. Number 10, Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi figures that if he doesn't want to have neighbors, the best thing to do is to buy it all up. When you have noisy neighbors, there are typically two choices, accept it or move away. But when you're Lionel Messi, you have another option. Messi and his family moved into a house in a coastal town south of Barcelona back in 2012, but they were extremely noisy. Messi's neighbors right next door had bought the house right before the 2008 recession, and they would have lost money if they sold it at market value. So they decided to rent it out, and that meant a lot of strangers kept coming around and having wild parties. Messi's original plan was to build a dividing wall, but a lawsuit from the neighbors prevented that. So instead, Messi just bought the house himself just so he could have some peace and quiet. But this isn't as crazy as... Number 9, Danny Granger. Former NBA star Danny Granger decided to build a bat cave. Danny Granger earned some pretty big contracts. He made over $70 million in the NBA. That's a lot of money, but is it actually bat cave money? Granger started his bat cave project and continued with it for three years. The catch here is that we don't know if it was ever completed. Maybe that's the whole point of having a bat cave. The last update of the bat cave was when he gave an interview to Sports Illustrated talking about the details in 2012. In the interview, he mentioned that the bat cave was having a circle built in it that Granger would park on. Then the circle would just spin around just so Granger wouldn't ever have to back out of his driveway. And oh yeah, after that, the car would get lifted up on the circle into his house. Do you know if the bat cave was ever finished? Let us know in the comments. Number eight, Al Jefferson. Al Jefferson must own the biggest bed that we've ever seen. And it makes sense. Al Jefferson is six foot 10 and almost 300 pounds. In his 13 years in the NBA, he's made over $133 million. So putting it into a bed that fits him makes sense. But did he need all this bed though? His teammate, Mo Williams, was so amazed, he tweeted out a photo of Jefferson in his bed. Look at this bed! It's 10 feet by 12 feet. It's huge, even for a guy like Jefferson. The bed cost Jefferson more than 23 grand, a price that's more than what a lot of people pay for their car. But a big bed definitely is not as crazy as... Number seven, Marquise Daniels. Buying a chain of his own head? Why? Marquise Daniels spent a decade in the NBA before retiring in 2013, and he made more than $36 million during his career. Having all that disposable income made Daniels realize that he needed a diamond replica of his head made. It kind of looks like one of those faces in Madame Tussauds wax museum, right? The exact price of this custom chain wasn't ever revealed. The designer was Jason of Beverly Hills, who definitely charges a hefty premium for his work. What's crazier than Daniel's chain? This tattoo that he got on his forearm. Number six, Chris Singleton. In 2012, Washington Wizards rookie Chris Singleton spent $10,000 on lottery tickets for the Mega Millions. That may seem like a small price for a player who made close to one and a half million that year, but playing the lottery is basically throwing money away and it's almost never a plus EV situation. But in this case, maybe it was. Even then, baseball superstar Matt Kemp got in on the action, and he had just signed a $160 million contract a year earlier. 
The Mega Millions lottery was up to $640 million that year. Singleton said it was either blowing the cash on the lottery or blowing it in the club. Singleton's NBA career was brief since he played just three seasons for the Washington Wizards, but he did make $4.7 million in his career. Number 5. Ryan Khalil Ryan Khalil took out an ad in the Charlotte Observer guaranteeing that the Carolina Panthers would win the Super Bowl back in 2012. Part of being a pro athlete is all about having confidence, but this is taking it a bit too far. You don't need to look it up. The Panthers didn't win a Super Bowl that year, nor any other year since Khalil took out that ad. For what it's worth, Khalil played center for the Panthers his entire 12-year career and actually was one win away from a Super Bowl title in Super Bowl 50 in 2016. When the Panthers got to the Super Bowl that year, some journalists started to say that Khalil was just a few years off in his prediction. But it's better to be off in a prediction than be off on a budget like... Number 4. Antoine Walker Despite making more than $108 million during his NBA career, Antoine Walker has had money troubles. We're not really highlighting any single one of his purchases, but really, just his spending problem. Anyone can go broke if they spend more than they earn. In an interview with Sports Illustrated, he claimed to have a thing for cars. By his own admission, he usually had six or seven new cars at any given point. On top of that, he was buying homes, expensive jewelry, and all kinds of things that he really didn't need. His habit of lending money to friends and his gambling issues didn't help either. In 2010, Walker filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy just two years after retiring from the NBA. However, his story didn't happen in vain. He now works with Morgan Stanley to help educate athletes on how to manage their wealth responsibly. Number 3. Deshaun Stevenson Deshaun Stevenson famously bought an ATM. Just why? Stevenson entered the NBA right out of high school in 2000 and played for 13 years. Stevenson made more than $27 million playing in the NBA. So why did he put an ATM in his house? Apparently he was inspired by Rob Durdick because he had one. That way his friends could withdraw cash when they needed it because, come on, even if you're rich, it has to get tiring loaning people money. You could make the argument that the ATM is technically an investment since he charged a $4.50 convenience fee. You would think he would charge an even five bucks because, you know, that whole Abraham Lincoln $5 tattoo. Number two, Rafael Nadal. Tennis superstar Rafael Nadal just finished buying this yacht that's worth a whopping $80 million. Okay, okay, just kidding. It only cost him around $6.2 million. It would have been ridiculous if he spent $80 million on it, because that would be more than a third of his estimated $200 million plus net worth. $6.2 million for a yacht is actually quite reasonable for someone worth $200 million or more. Plus, it also makes sense when the house he owns has a yacht club in the backyard. In fact, this purchase isn't ridiculous at all. In fact, it's beginning to look like a smart move. Watch this video to learn more. Nadal had been a longtime yacht lover and he finally made that splurge in 2019 and the yacht was delivered this year. It's an 80 foot sunreef power catamaran that he named Great White. Nadal designed the interior himself prior to it being launched at Sunreef Shipyard in Poland. Number 1. Carmelo Anthony Carmelo Anthony posted a picture of himself beside a camel with the caption quote, Everybody got dogs and cats as pets. I got a camel. Okay, makes sense. When you've been a 10-time NBA All-Star, that means you buy a camel? With the money he's made, getting a camel is barely a drop in the bucket, but it's still just strange. Do you know how long he kept the camel? Let us know in the comments. Here's what's next. 